Hey everybody, today I'm going to be sculpting Bugs Bunny. By now, if you've seen several of my videos, you kind of probably have a pretty good idea of what I'm up to here. Simply adding in some primitives to really block in the volume of bugs. I've got two spheres that I've got mirrored and then I remesh them together for the cheeks. I've got that main sphere that I just moved around and shaped for the head. And now with the cheeks being remeshed, I just pushed and pulled the chin. My middle sphere is actually going to be the snout. I'm going in here with my draw sharp brush and I'm blocking in kind of the details of the snout and the nose on the snout and some of those wrinkles, as well as the wrinkles in the mouth. And now I'll use the draw sharp brush to block in kind of where his eyes are gonna be. I'll add in some tubes for the ears. I absolutely love the tube tool in Nomad. It's, it's just gotten better and better the way you can adjust the thicknesses of it. So there with the ears, I'm able to make, to really block out the, the overall shapes of the ears just without even having to validate the tubes when I do it. Here I've added in a cylinder and moved it around. This is going to be his collar. This is actually going to be conductor bugs. If you guys have seen some of the old classic Looney Tunes where bugs conducts an orchestra, that's what I'm going for here. I tried using the trim tool to cut out the middle of the collar. I wasn't too happy with it. So what I ended up doing is just adding in a uh, cube and sizing that around, rotating it, and then using a Boolean operation. When you do a Boolean operation, it just means you select both layers and you turn off the visibility of one of the layers and then you can tell it to do a, a voxel merge. And when you do that, the one that's hidden uh, gets taken away from the, uh, the one that's seen. And so that's how I'm able to cut out that collar just using that cube. All right, I've added in some cylinders here for his body. And now I'm using the tube tool again to, to go in and work out the arms. Make sure to name your layers as you go. Always very important. And now I'm going to create a cylinder. This is going to be his jacket. And so here I was actually able to use the trim tool uh, with the rectangle to kind of get the result I want to just cut out part of that jacket so I can, uh, I can have those two sides of the jacket in there. I mentioned I was using the draw sharp brush for some of those details. Uh, some of you has, have asked like where I got the, the draw sharp brush. It's not actually built in Nomad. It's one that I've created and I've got a short tutorial in my uh, YouTube channel that you can check out that explains, goes into detail how I do that. Here later on in the video, I'm gonna make another uh, specific brush for doing some of the fur on his cheeks and that'll be a custom brush. So I'll kind of go through that process again, even here in this video, just really briefly. All right, added in a cylinder for the teeth. And really I'm going for a lot of asymmetry where I can. So I actually took the symmetry off on the teeth so I can get some interesting, interesting shapes. The more symmetrical things are, a lot of times you lose a lot of that appeal and interest and kind of that, even that handmade or hand-drawn feel that uh, it feels so good uh, with the classics. So it's good to, to be sure and have as much asymmetry in there as you can. So even though I drew out the eyes with the draw sharp brush, uh, I'm actually going to use geometry to make the eyes. So I made some spheres, moved them around, warped them around. And then after I did that, you'll see I really quickly went in and split the geometry using the split brush. And then I took the top part as the lids and the bottom part as the eyeballs. And from there, I just inflated the bottoms of the, the lids and reshaped them. Now I'm masking where the eyeballs are gonna go. And I'm really just using the mask as a guide. And then I'm gonna add the sphere in and put it right where those pupils are. So sometimes it's good to just use the mask tool as just a way of drawing on top of your geometry to, to kind of plan out what you're going to do. I'm gonna continue naming things, detailing things. There's gonna be a lot of that here. So here I took off the symmetry on the, the eyes. I actually have them separated as different objects altogether, but just so I can get a lot of the asymmetry in his face pose. I am working off of a drawing. 
And rather than pull that up as a reference in my iPad, which I could do, and a lot of people do that, and it's a great feature to have. Sometimes I just like having the screen space on my iPad, so I'll pull up a reference drawing on my phone and just uh, continuously look at that uh, as I need to. Again, I really like adding symmetry, asymmetry, sorry, where I can, uh, because it really gives it that, that handmade feel that uh, you don't get when you just use straight up symmetry and rely on that. So I usually just use the symmetry to really block out, save me time in the initial forms. All right, here I'm using the clay buildup and, and regular, or sorry, the clay brush and the regular brush to kind of build up the forms and add in flesh kind of around the folds of the skin where the cheeks would push up and the, the ears might push his skin around on his head. It just gives it a lot of volume and feeling. So it's a lot of just kind of building up volume, smoothing it out, pushing and pulling it around. Just rinse, repeat. Now I'm going to validate those tubes on the ears, smooth them out, and then I'll use the flatten tool to go in and uh, flatten out the fronts of the ears. And then I select them and just kind of pull some of that back for the inner part of the ears. Push and pull it around. Use the draw sharp brush to really crease the inner details of the ears. And from there, I move the ears and start shaping them into a good kind of base shape. Again, these are symmetrical right now, but very quickly, I'm going to break that symmetry. In fact, I've already done it here and start tweaking things. Uh, I'm eventually going to try to, to attempt to twist the ear. Nomad doesn't have a good twist brush, so I kind of get around it by using some masking and just rotating it with the gizmo. Go back to the arms and, and then I will validate those, remesh them, add in some detail for the wrinkles. Similar to what I was doing on the face where I will add up some material with the clay and the brush, go in with the draw sharp and just create some folds. For the arms, for the most part, I'll keep symmetrical. They're not really the focus of the image. And so I think it's okay to have those. Plus he's got this really rigid stance. I think uh, if anything, the arms kind of being symmetrical kind of really add to that uh, rigidity to his uh, posture. Going in with the jacket and using the clay buildup tool and the flat tool to uh, build in the flaps around his collar and his chest. So the smooth tool works really well, but sometimes the flatten tool just does a much better job when it comes to uh, forms that need to have a, a little bit more of a crisp, um, almost um, carved look to them. And that's really good for something starchy like his suit, uh, using the flat tool instead of just smoothing and softening things out and keeping everything sharp and with crisp edges there. All right, and now I'm remeshing the parts of the bow tie and going in with the sharp brush to create some creases. You'll notice I use that sharp brush a lot more than the crease brush. Uh, I just kind of like the way it feels a little bit more. And again, you can go back and watch my YouTube tu tutorial on how to just adjust the brushes fall off to get that uh, those settings dialed in similarly. Adding it here to create the little creases around the buttons just really adds a lot of character to those buttons, makes them feel really embedded on a shirt. And here I'm just kind of going through and refining things again with the sharp brush, both on sub and without sub to kind of push and pull those creases. Here I'm using the flatten tool on the back of his jacket to really get some of those pleats and those folds in correctly. We won't really ever see the back too much, but uh, you never know. So it's good to at least have something back there and give it a little bit of TLC. So here I've hidden out, hidden the other layers so I can get a good uh, view of the jacket and the collar where it kind of gets crowded out by the neck and the collar there. Sometimes it's just hard to get those, get to those things unless you can turn off a layer. All right, so he's really coming together now. Just do some, a little bit more tweaking on the asymmetry of his face, curling up his lips. Messing with the snout, kind of angling it a little bit, give him some character. Also looking at my reference, just to make sure I'm good there. 
Uh, just for material's sake, I figured it'd be a lot easier to go ahead and create a separate object for the nose. Uh, you know, I already had it blocked out on the snout with the sharp brush, so I knew right where to put it. So I just created a sphere, very quickly put it into place, and used the move tool to shape it. All right, here's where I start messing with trying to turn the ears. Uh, again, what I ended up doing is using the mask brush and masking off part of the ear and then blurring the mask constantly to, to get a nice taper and fall off and then switching to the transform tool and rotating the ear. Uh, ultimately, I still had to go in and kind of re-sculpt some areas to make it look nice and clean. Uh, I ended up doing that on the other ear as well. Again, I've broken symmetry at this point, so I can have two ears to have uh, their own kind of abnormalities in their po posing. So I'm just repeating the same process here on the other ear. Rinse, repeat. And again, cleaning up the posing here. Keep in mind this video is sped up quite a bit. This was about a four and a half hour sculpt and we're condensing it down so you don't have to sit there and be bored to tears. And I can kind of give you more of an overview. If you guys would like to see more in depth, uh, more real time process, let me know. Uh, I did that with the hairless kitty video. You can go check that out. That was done more real time. Uh, and I even took that one and kind of did an overview on, on some of the tricks of getting it into Blender and rendering. I'm feeling pretty good where I am with the geometry. And so here I'm blocking out the colors and I'm getting ready to light it. Also noticing from the reference he drawing, he only had two buttons instead of three. So very quickly made that change. It's really a good idea to color as you go and light maybe a little bit earlier in the process, even than I find myself doing just because it helps you uh, get a sense of the overall picture as you work towards it. And here, I, I somewhere along the line, I had accidentally merged, I think my eyeball and, and my pupil together, and that was causing me problems, or the, sorry, I, I had merged the eyelid and the eyeball back together. If you remember, I had split those apart originally. So I had to go in, mask them out, and re-split them. So that was, if you were wondering what I was doing there, I was simply rectifying a problem from earlier. It just it had taken up to this point before I noticed that. And it's really a good idea to keep those things separate because there's such a difference, not only in the color, but also in the, the roughness uh, the properties that I'm using. And a lot of times it's really good to keep those sorts of materials separate, especially if you're gonna be pulling it into Blender and you know you're gonna have different materials for those things. So then you don't have to create a material that does everything. Here I'm painting in the pinks of the ears. So that's another thing that maybe I could have split off into separate geometry, but I I think that one, I, th I think I'm gonna keep it similar to the fur material. So I went ahead and just left it as is and just painted it in instead of separating it out. Continuing to refine the sculpt here. And just pushing and pulling that asymmetry, just making sure and it looks like my reference drawing that I'm, I'm going after here. All right, now I'm gonna use the tube tool to create some whiskers. Again, absolutely love the tu tube tool, especially how you can adjust the individual radius on each of the control points. So that allows me to get a nice taper at the ends of the whiskers. And the whiskers are an easy way to get some asymmetry in the pose too. So rather than duplicating them from side to side or mirroring them from side to side, I'm just going to go ahead and create those. They're really easy to make, a lot of fun to play with too. Here I'm using the clay brush and the sharp tool to kind of add some folds or on the collar where those cheeks are pushing in. 
All right, so here's where I end up building a custom move brush. So similar to the way I do custom sharp brush, what I do is I go in and I tweak the fall off. You see me do it there really quick to kind of have the shape of the tufts of fur that I want on his cheeks. And by doing that, uh, it allows me to then push and pull uh, these shapes right out of the, the cheeks that have that, that very specific taper to them. So that was a nice little trick and made it really easy to go in and very quickly push and pull out some fur pieces that have a really good shape to them and sort of a fur clump shape to them. Again, it's the same technique I'm doing on the sharp brush. Uh, nothing too difficult there. It's just tweaking the fall off to have the shape. All right, continue to refine things, going in, add increases. And these are just kind of the nice little finishing touches on the model. So here, instead of doing the move brush up at the top, I wanted to have some longer hairs. So I did that with a tube brush, tapered it, and then I very quickly started duplicating them. And every time I duplicate, I kind of rotate and scale, rotate and scale, till I had a nice kind of tuft of hair at the top. If you watch some of the tutorials that Glenn Southern does with hair and fur, I'm kind of doing some similar tricks here. I'm not really using hair cards, rather, I'm, I'm using the geometry, pushing and pulling uh, for the little bits of scruff and then duplicating the tubes for the hair on top. Here I'm using the tube tool to get some curved little lashes that are black. Uh, this really gives it a nice uh, hand-drawn or cartoon quality, having a lot of contrast between the bottom of the lid and where it hits the eye. So I wanna make that black. Uh, pull the roughness all the way up on that so there's no specularity on there. From here, I duplicated, mirrored the lash, and then moved it around to mit match the curvature of the eyelid. I'm using the clay tool to add some quick ribbing in the shirt here. And on the cummerbund as well. And then I'll switch to my draw sharp brush and use that to create the little divots and details on his buttons. Really gonna be tiny details on the final image, but they're fun to have in there. All right, from here, I'll add in my three-point lighting. Get a nice strong key coming from the top right. I'll keep it pretty white and then go for a really bluish fill light on the left. And then an extremely intense rim light on the back. And I kind of play with the intensity. I, when you turn around, sometimes it gets a little bit too strong. All right, some last looks, some final details. I want to add a little bit lighter yellow paint just around the edges of his jacket just to provide some contrast where the edges of his um i don't know what you even call that the little jacket flaps are using the sharp brush knock in some quick divots around his cheeks and some quick post-processing this is pretty much it here um after this, I'm going to take it into Blender. I'm actually going to add some fur, do similar techniques to what I did in the Hairless Kitty tutorial. If you're curious, you can watch that. But uh, give him some nice hair and fur, and it just really adds a lot. And it's, it was really easy to do. It really didn't take me but maybe 30 minutes to get him prepped in Blender. So here you see the turnaround in Nomad, and then I'm going to show you a nice final pan of the Blender render. And so here's the pan of the Blender render. And you can see that that fur in there, and it's just so nice. It looks great Nomad, but man, you take it into cycles, spend about 30 minutes, and you can have something like this. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, comment below, like, subscribe, you know the routine, and be sure and and leave me a comment if you'd like me, if you'd like to see a more specific video and any questions that you need addressed. Uh, thank you guys. I'll talk to you later.